वर्तते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते Namaste. So, the last time we went over <laughs> the four states of consciousness that are the basis of this teaching. Now, why is this important? Because the four states of consciousness are the most fundamental fact of our existence and experience. Everybody experiences these four states every single day. So, is this fundamental? It's about as fundamental as you can get. And since we put our teaching on the basis of phenomenology, or observing things in the here and now, in other words, no post-dated check, no faith necessary. Huh? You don't have to take my word for it. You can observe all these things natively in your own experience. So you should do this. You should actually look for these four states of consciousness, jagrat or waking, svapna or dreaming, sushupti or deep sleep, and finally turiya. What is Turiya exactly? Well, I've described it before in other videos. But briefly, it is the source of all the other states of consciousness and the origin of awareness, pure awareness. And this, of course, is the basis of self-realization. So if you begin to observe the other three states of consciousness, you automatically put yourself in Turiya consciousness. Because in Turiya consciousness, one of the definitions is that the other three states are its objects. Consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. This is self-realization. You can have this immediately. All you have to do is understand it and do the work to make it real. But what about the other things? What about the yogas? What about the different kinds of philosophy that you find in the Vedic literatures and other spiritual shastras? And what about the chakras? What about the energy centers of the body? How do they correlate with the four states of consciousness? So I'm going to put up the good old chart one more time. Here it is. So you see the four states of consciousness on the right. Chagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. And the yogas that go with them. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. So these four yogas, just like the four states of consciousness can operate simultaneously, the four yogas can be performed simultaneously in those states of consciousness. I mean, this may sound really difficult if you haven't tried it, but if you begin to observe the states of consciousness, well, then what are you doing in those states of consciousness? And so gradually the four yogas will come into being just around this observation. Now further, there are teachings connected with each of these four yogas and states of consciousness. And these are known as vadas or views or darshans. Darshan and view mean about the same thing. Dvaita vada, vishishta dvaita vada, Vivartavada and Ajatavada, and they correlate with the yogas and the states of consciousness. What can I say? Things look different from different points of view. So from the state of karma yoga or jagrat consciousness, what we're doing in Ajata 
consciousness seems unreal. See, the Ajatavada says, the world is not, and you as an individual are not. Brahman alone is. This is about as succinct as you can express it. And then the next stage down, Vivartivada, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. So these statements seem absurd and unreal to someone who's identified with the body and thinks that the world is real. <laughs> That's why you have to perform the yogas. You can't just jump up from being basically a two-legged animal in the material world all the way to Ajatavada enlightenment. No, you have to go step by step. And the steps are the different yogas and the teachings related to them, the vadas or the Vedic philosophies, the views that describe these states of consciousness. And then finally, we have, well, where do you look for these different states of consciousness? Well, you look in the chakras, of course. So the chakras are also divided into four divisions. There's the lower two chakras, the genitals and dantian. Then the next two, the solar plexus and heart. They correspond with Vishishtadvaitavada. The throat and forehead chakras uh, correspond to Vivartivada, and finally the crown is the expression of Ajatavada. So if you go looking in these places, you will find these views, these yogas, and these states of consciousness. Now, <laughs> that was just the intro, folks. <laughs> the teachings in the various schools of yoga and self-realization also follow these categories. And you will find, in general, each school specializes in one or maybe more, <laughs> I say maybe because it's rare, one or rarely more than one of these views or states of consciousness or yogas. So that's why I really appreciate Ramana Maharshi, because although he was teaching in Vivartavada, he had no trouble switching gears and addressing issues in the other Vadas. Uh, and also uh, Shivananda, Shivananda Yogi, uh, has a wonderful teaching that encompasses all these yogas and states of consciousness, although he doesn't express it exactly like that. Uh, Still, all the yogas are there. And this is also true of our teaching, dharmasar, the essence of dharma, that this teaching covers all four states of consciousness, all four primary yogas, all four of the primary views or philosophical explanations, and the functions of all seven chakras in the four divisions. Where are you going to find another teaching like this? Where are you going to find another teacher like this? Because although I mentioned Ramana Maharshi and Shivananda, their successors have not carried on their broad-minded views. They have rather specialized in one only. So we, we understand that a self-realized person sees everything in its proper light, in its proper relationship with the absolute. So because they see everything like that, they can explain it in relation to the whole. And we began this video with the invocation to Sri Ishupanishad, Aum Purnam, Aum Brahman, the Absolute, is Purnam. It's everything. It's full. It's complete. It encompasses and enfolds and contains everything and anything that we could even imagine and more. So a teaching to really be of Brahman, from Brahman, by Brahman, 
has to also be complete. And so this is why we call this esoteric teaching, Dharma Sar, the king of knowledge. You cannot find any living school, uh, I don't mean in books or on websites or in videos, but a living person who is available to teach all four states of consciousness, all four primary yogas and views. So that is why this teaching and its many, many videos covers all of these. And if you look on our uh, channel page, or if you uh, simply look in the video description down below here, you'll find a link that downloads the catalog, the index of the complete teaching. I say the teaching is complete, even though I could go on expanding it forever. Huh? But I say it's complete because it does address all seven chakras, all four views, all four yogas, and all four states of consciousness. So this is Purna. I wanted to call, actually, I wanted to call this teaching Purna Yoga, right? But there's already another group called Purna Yoga, and they said that if I use that name, they would sue. <laughs> and if you look at their site, it's only Hatha Yoga, it's only Asanas. They don't go into any of the other yogas. So they're a bunch of phonies. Typical, huh? The real people don't sue. Uh, even if somebody steals our videos, they're already under a Creative Commons license. So, you, you know, there's no way for us to sue them or get compensation from them. You know, fine. It's great. We love that our ideas are getting spread wide and far uh, by being carried by different uh, channels. And now the temple going off next door. So what does it mean? It means this teaching is a viable vehicle for complete self-realization. Aung Purnam, Adap Purnam Idam. This is the complete thing. Huh? This is, no, there's nothing missing. You don't have to go off to any other teaching to find another piece because everything is here. Everything is available. And I am also available. If you want to come here and surrender and become a real disciple, you know, I would give you the initiation that is like a booster rocket to the moon, okay? <laughs> or to the sun, whichever one you want to go to. <laughs> because Vedanta Sutra says, there are two paths at the end of this body, to the moon and to the sun. And the moon path offers apparently sweet enjoyments, heavenly enjoyments, but then it leads to rebirth again in this material world. Whereas the path to the sun is more difficult, it's more rigorous, but it leads to deathlessness. It leads to immortality. It leads to moksha, to not having to be born again in any world, even the heavenly world, and to becoming one with the universal consciousness, Brahman. This is the highest stage of self-realization. And since I had one, well, two and a half gurus, <laughs> who were fully self-realized, then I can also make this claim to be Bhagawan, to be the one who is most fortunate to have been blessed with the highest stage of realization. Thank you, Mr. Peacock. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.